Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, in particular, Nino. It was a great pleasure to work with Nino for so many years. As it was said, uh, he joined uh, the in 2016 already. So this is Nino and uh, Nino Atulo Fantudin. And he started his career actually at the Institute Rutger Boscovich. And there, one of the remarkable works that he's done is uh, work on epidemic spreading, um, the identification of so-called patient zero, in fact, the first patient um, that falls ill, often very difficult but crucial to figure out actually how a disease will spread and how it came about in the first place. That also uh, earned him an invitation to the Robert Koch Institute, uh, of course the famous international research institution in epidemiology. And later on, when sadly COVID-19 broke out, he was quick to have a real-time epidemic data song to help predict what might happen and also help to be better prepared. And many students were joining. That was in collaboration with uh, the New York University, in fact, the Quran Institute, uh, the famous institution. And there were other stations in his CV um, that I don't mention in all the details, but of course, uh, Nino could certainly add to what I've said already. Now, Nino joined, in a sense, in the aftermath of the Future ICT project. I'm not sure anybody remembers this. It was a very ambitious international and, in fact, worldwide project that was uh, trying really to come up with tools and science in order to address the challenges of humanity in this 21st century. And there were three elements uh, that I'd like to mention very shortly. The planetary nervous system links to what we call the Internet of Things to collect data. Then a living Earth simulator that would uh, simulate uh, possible futures in order to know what our alternatives, what our options are, and to choose from that. And importantly, a global participatory platform. So it would not just be a tool for a few people, but in fact it should be at our service, everyone's service. And at that time, the European Commission required from us something like a moonshot project. And in fact, uh, at that time, we said we need uh, to learn a lot more about planet Earth. So we were proposing an inverse moonshot, basically, to fly back to Earth to look at what happens on Earth in greater detail, because at that time, we knew more about the stars in the universe than about what happened on Earth. That was before big data became a big subject, I would say. And uh, even the US uh, pointed out I needed a futurized T project, really, and it was about complex systems, it was uh, about integrating different fields of science, including social science, and to create a socially adaptive, self-organized ICT system. I was not the only country interested in that, and then eventually, and in fact, various projects went forward, um, and they dropped the ethics, the democracy, and the science. But they said they would improve the state of the world, in fact, instead they were interested in making money and gaining power and look at the state of the world, all of the problems that we have been warning of and we wanted to find solutions for, like wars, epidemic spreading, financial instability, to mention just a few, and environmental issues, they are now plaguing humanity and it's a lot more costly than it would have been to prepare well. Now, there's now a second attempt, basically, to make things better. Um, ETH and European institutions 
Among others, I want to build this digital twin of planet Earth in order to learn, among others, more about climate change and what we can do about that. And then the question is you now how to build a digital twin. It's something which is now very popular. You can do that, of course, for cities, for production systems. Um, it's also attempted to build a digital twin of our health, human health, in fact, your personal health. So those digital twins uh, in perspectives will be personalized and in very high detail. And so how are you able to model this? I mean, having a lot of data is not enough. And here is actually where Nino and co-authors made really great breakthroughs. Baiba uh, is also in the room. I'd like to congratulate you both to those breakthroughs. So recently they have published a paper about how it's possible in a complex system to model the dynamics and how the different parts are connected because we're talking about network dynamical complex systems and those were very challenging in the past to model and in particular to kind of automatically model using big data and that is becoming possible now through this work and also they've gone a step further to say Perhaps we can improve those systems, um, so they have developed uh, a control approach and uh, they're using artificial neural networks basically to learn how to control dynamical systems. And in fact, the newspaper reported about this uh, like a moon mission, so mission completed, we could say. And uh, the question of it is now how far could you go? and how far should we go? So, you know, dynamical systems, neural networks are also <coughs> dynamical network systems, right? Would it eventually become possible to model and control the brain? And that sounds far-fetched perhaps uh, to many, but it's not as absurd as you would think because not only newspaper like the economists are basically suggesting that we are nearing the times of uh, neuroeconomics uh, and neurocomputation, uh, neurotechnology, um, and that will happen basically pretty soon. And perhaps we will not even need an implanted computer chip for that. Whatever the state of the art is, uh, Nino was always confident it would play out well, so he was not one of the doomsday sayers. So uh, he basically said it will be fine, no, don't worry. In contrast, actually, to uh, one of our recent Nobel Prize winners, uh, Geoffrey Hinton, who very late, in fact, uh, started to get worried about the work that he's done about AI systems, still, he got the Nobel Prize, we should say of course, and uh, perhaps Nino would say, don't worry, if things get bad, we will dismantle the system. Now you all know what is the best about Switzerland. Well, the flag is a big plus. You've heard that joke probably before, but it's also a red flag. And Nino was our red flag guy, so he basically had to figure out whether whatever we did, employing somebody or whatever we did, was there a red flag we had to pay attention to? And there were very few red flags, but there is one I need to mention, which is uh, actually visa affairs. So one day he got promoted from postdoc to a senior scientist and from there to senior scientist level two. And at some point uh, he had been working with us, for us, for ATH already for several years. And as a thank you, you know, for this upgrade of his position, he got the visa level B taken away and got back to visa level. 
And that was not funny. That basically brought him to a point where he had, he had to decide what to do because such a thing also has important impact on private affairs, on your entire life plan. And so he started to pay more attention to opportunities in the business world. So in fact, he has co-established a spin-off company, I thought, as using AI for investment. So now he's making money, millions perhaps. Uh, and it has a proof quality because it's actually an official ATH spin-off. Also, congratulations to this, we can all be proud. And again, plans are very ambitious, so that's uh, Stefan Plaser, and uh, some of you remember him as well. He's also been working some years with us. So, um, this is one of the interviews BlackRock versus ISO Asset AI. And here is just one quote. Their AI solution competes with investment giant BlackRock and its AI solution Aladdin. How can you be so confident? You know, because you cannot argue with science. There is science behind what they do and how they do it. And in fact, uh, here is a quote from Nuno's habilitation thesis he will be talking about just in a few seconds from now. Newton allegedly said that he could calculate the motion of the heavenly bodies, Mucha um, sing again, uh, but not the madness of people. And here, I believe he was referring to financial markets, where he lost a fortune um, because he hadn't anticipated the movement of the markets. And that's why he talked about the madness of people and that he failed to anticipate it. Not so, Nino and I saw they have science. And with this, I'm handing over to Nino and to the fan to get to know him himself.